Ten years ago, a virus spread all over the world, making reality merged with fiction. A small percentage of the population is affected by this virus that gives them special abilities. Our protagonist uses his cheat-level skills to face various challenges and protect those who can't defend themselves. Akijo Haruhiko is a first-year Hosea Academy student rushing to school with a phantom called Guru after waking up late. He tries to hurry as fast as he can, but despite going down a hill he's still slow as a turtle. He manages to get to school just to find his friend and teammate Mai, fighting a huge phantom that was attacking the school. He pulls his sketchbook out and starts drawing the phantom. He tries to draw as fast as he can, even sweating to rush and complete the sketch. But it proves to be quite hard, as the phantom keeps moving and Mai peer pressuring him. He finishes all the details of his sketch and raises his book, calling out for his power, the Book of Thoth. His sketchbook starts to shine brightly, sending a beam against the phantom, transforming it into small beads that get absorbed by his book, sealing the evil phantom inside. The duo quickly celebrates, but their colleagues don't feel joy about it. They start mocking them instead, mentioning they always fail in an entertaining manner. Mai then starts using her abilities to destroy the captured phantom, resulting in Akijo's sketchbook also being destroyed. But despite their combined skills, Arisu tells they're still the worst performing team out of their school club. As it's a club specialized in hunting phantoms, where students get paid to perform missions. Therefore, they won't receive their payments due to the damage they have caused to the school's clock tower. Akijo and Mai decide to add more members to their team to improve their performance because they are worried they won't progress or get paid. Akijo then resumes his daily life and goes to the library to research several interesting topics. To him, going home early doesn't have much value as he lives with Roru, a phantom, but at the same time, he misses his parents and expects them to return home soon. While Akijo is walking home, Roru notices some phantoms lurking around, which catches his attention. While preparing for an attack, he sees a girl sitting far away from him. He attempts to save her but gets shocked when the girl devours the phantoms. Impressed by what he saw, he rushes towards the girl and asks for her name, Rina she tells. He offers her to join his team without thinking twice. Unfortunately, she declines and runs away from him. The next day, unwilling to give up, he approaches her again. He convinces her to talk to him by offering to pay for her lunch in the school cafeteria. Akijo explains to Rina that she will get paid if she accomplishes a task. Since she said she had no allowance, she agreed to his request. He then introduces her to Mai. And just in time, Mai informs them about a new task. The three of them went to their task location and see phantoms dancing in limbo and disrupting the local radio waves. Akijo comes up with a strategy to dance with them after Mai cannot fight them. He discovers that the phantoms seek human respect. The three of them succeed in passing the cable on their initial attempt. However, as the wires get narrower, it becomes more difficult for them to pass through. And on one of Haruhiko's tries, he is electrocuted leaving only Mai in the game. Akijo and Rina cheer her, and eventually, Mai beats the phantoms. When it's time to seal the phantom, Akijo panics because he forgot to buy a new sketchbook. So, Rina tells them that she's going to be the one to seal the phantom, and devours them. On their way to report to Arisu back in the academy, they encounter a girl whom Akijo is not familiar with. He pauses at the stairs and looks at her as she walks away. Akijo believes that now that Rina has joined the team, his sealing abilities won't be as often needed, and he will be kicked from the team. He tells himself that he has to improve his abilities because, in addition to his power to seal, he can also summon phantoms. Ikijo learns that the girl they saw in the academy is Koido, a powerful solo phantom hunter. He swiftly welcomes the girl, but she ignores him as he speaks to Rina in the corridor. Arisu calls Ikijo's team, and they are given a new task. Their team must accompany Koido while they battle machine phantoms. They arrive at the location and he swiftly comes up with a strategy to defeat the phantoms after discovering that Koido is having difficulty doing so. Mai successfully destroys the speaker and he instructs Koido that it is now her turn to act. He completes sketching as she chants to restrain all of the small phantoms, and Rina devours them up with her skill. Akijo seals the huge phantom successfully finishing their task. Koido then decides to leave, while pointing to Mai and Rina's skills being good enough, making Akijo doubt himself even more, as he starts to feel more useless and tries to create a chant where he can draw phantoms to aid them in battle. He comes up with the idea to use a Marcosia's, an evil demon phantom hellhound, but when he summons it, it turns out to be a winged puppy. A few days later, Rina shares her problems with Akijo and Mai. She reveals her parents are strict and don't support the idea of being a phantom hunter because she usually comes home late. She further explains that she misses her sister, 
who ran away from home because of their parents' behavior. A phantom might control her, says Ruru. Koido interrupts the team while determining what is going on and reveals that the bus she rides to go home is a phantom. The group goes to the bus stop. It doesn't take long before a bus pulls up in front of them, and Rina takes the initiative to board it. Akijo chases her quickly but becomes trapped inside. When he glances at her, she is staring out into space. Akijo scans the area as the bus drops them down in front of a house. He looks at Rina, greeting someone inside the house whom she refers to as her mother and father. He decides to enter and is shocked to see talking bunnies. When he eats the rice that was given to him, bunny ears appear on his head, and he becomes hypnotized. Akijo regains consciousness back in the bus, and when Rina wakes up, they get immediately teleported to the front of her house. He checks the time on his phone and realizes time slowed down while inside the bus. The next day, Koido explains they got hypnotized after consuming the food, and they realize that the phantom is playing with Rina's emotions. They visit the bus stop once more, and the bus shows just as predicted. After receiving his sketchbook, Akijo begins to draw but he is once more put under hypnosis. Akijo spends the day again inside the bunny house, and when he goes into the washroom, he gains consciousness and realizes the situation. He tells Rina to come with him to the washroom and tries to wake her consciousness up, but she's still under hypnosis and says that he's her brother. Without any other idea, he abruptly hugs her, making her get back to her senses. Out of shyness, she throws him into the toilet. Rina tells Akijo outside the house that the phantom's deceit is the sight she has been waiting to see. A while after, they get transported into a different dimension. There, Rina's bunny family explains they were created by her desire to have a normal supportive family. But now that she found out the truth, they will vanish, giving her the choice to go with them, becoming their real daughter and living as a happy family. Rina's eyes shake as she mindlessly starts to move forward, despite knowing that she won't ever be able to come back. Akijo tries to stop her while chasing but he trips. He shouts he knows how she feels, explaining his mother also abandoned him and left home because she couldn't get along with his father, just like her sister. He adds that he doesn't really have a relationship with his father, but he chooses to never run away, because he's the one who will be always waiting for his mother to return. He shouts more passionately, mentioning how sad her sister will feel when she comes back home but doesn't see her little sister again. Rina stops walking forward and her body starts shaking. Tears start to drop from her face as he tells her everyone is waiting for her. She tightly holds her skirt and takes small steps backward, as she apologizes as her bunny parents disappear. They return to the real world, and Rina looks up to the starry sky, promising her bunny parents that she will be strong. Akijo finds out that Koido used to be popular in their class, but nobody talks to her anymore. Akijo goes to Koido after class to talk. When he gets into the place she's heading to, he is startled when he sees a giant phantom. Koido orders him to back off, but she cannot use her power because of the smoke she is breathing. She receives help from a mysterious girl who releases a giant teddy bear that punches the phantom into the air, and Mai shows up to defeat the phantom with one kick. After the phantom vanishes, Ikijo checks if Koido's okay. They go to the clinic and meet Kirumi, the girl who helped them earlier, and her teddy bear named Albert. Koido and Mai debate who should eliminate the phantom as Akijo watches. Arisu enters the room and she suggests holding a race to see who can catch the phantom first. The winner will receive a reward. Akijo notices Koido clench her fist as they talk. Koido goes out to chase the phantom, so Akijo quickly goes after her to help. While they're patrolling the area, Koido senses the phantom and rushes ahead into the place. Akijo sees Koido struggling to defeat the phantom and summons Marcosias. The phantom vanishes again, and Koido refuses his help, determined to find it by herself. Akijo goes to Arisu and learns about Koido's past. She's persistent in sealing the phantom because it's the same one that destroyed her relationship with her parents and friends. Akijo quickly gets into the action. And when he arrives where Koido is, he summons Marchojas and stops the phantom from killing her. He helps her get up, and just in time, Mai and the group arrive. Ikijo draws in his sketchbook and successfully seals it in the Book of Troth while Albrecht and Mai are attacking. Later, Koido appears in front of his home and expresses gratitude to him for his help and apologizes for her actions. At night, Ikijo finds a box that contains his childhood memories. He reads an essay from when he was a kid. And the next day, he turns into his younger self. When he arrives at school, nobody in his class from Wana can recognize him until he bumps into Kirumi. Kirumi takes her to his teacher until she finds something about him. She takes him to the Phantom Hunting Club. But when they ask him if he knows them, he answers, no. The team investigates Akijo's house and discovers he lives alone. 
He said he is used to it. So Maya offers her place so she can look over him. While walking home, he passes by a happy family in a park. Longing is written all over his eyes. At night, the thunder scares Akijo just as he and Maya are about to fall asleep. She approaches his bed and asks whether he overcame all of his troubles on his own. He tells her that his mother ran away from home and that his father always travels for work. She sympathizes with him, revealing she also lost her parents and lives alone. Mai and Akijo spend the next day having fun at the park. While walking, he softly tells her she wants to stay at her place. Suddenly, a Sandman phantom appears, so Mai tries to seal it. However, she collapses and tells Akijo to run, but he refuses. He runs towards the phantom but easily gets caught up by the strong wind. He stares at Mai's unconscious body, and out of frustration, he screams and wishes he's not a kid anymore. Suddenly, he transforms back to his adult self, and when he sees Mai's state, he gets angry and summons Cthulhu, another summoned phantom demon, in the shape of a small octopus. Akijo defeats the phantom, and he rushes to check on Mai. When they get to his home, she asks why he turned into a kid, and he replies it was probably from reading his essay. She reads through it, it was an essay about their previous weekend where Akijo lied, mentioning he spent the day happily playing with his parents, longing for a happy family. After everything returns to normal, Arisu tells the club that the students with special abilities from the other school got their abilities stolen by a phantom called Enigma, so she warns them to always go in groups and not fight that phantom. Akijo gets a call the next day and hears his mother's voice. They meet at the park and she asks about his well-being and mentions she always wanted to apologize to him but Akijo doesn't answer most of her questions. She gets up thanking him for letting her see him again, and starts to walk away. Akijo gets a flashback to the time when he was a kid and saw her leaving their house. He calls his mother out of fear of being abandoned again and rushes to her arms. They begin to live together again. A week goes by, and Ruru finds the situation weird and talks to the group. The group comes over to his house, and they eat dinner together. In the middle of their conversation, Mai excuses herself and goes to the hallway where she gets a call from Arisu, telling her that Akijo's mom has been missing for the past week. Mai suddenly gets attacked by his mother. Akijo hears the noise coming from their hallway. When he sees what's going on, Mai tells him that it's not his mother but Enigma, a phantom who can steal people's abilities and possess their bodies. Slowly, Enigma walks toward Akijo and tells him he has good abilities, but he's misusing them, so she will take them instead. Koido tries to shield the group from the attack but Enigma catches Akijo in her arms. They get outside. She kisses him, taking his abilities which turns him unconscious. Enigma then gets out of his mother's body and disappears. They take the body of Akijo's mother to the hospital and Akijo meets his mother's current husband. The man gives him the book, which his mother is always looking at. Akijo is surprised when he sees a photo of the two of them. The man mentions she always wanted to meet him and apologize for what she has done but she was always filled with guilt, thinking she didn't deserve to ever meet her son again. When the group is hanging out in Akijo's home Albert hacks a database server, and they find out that Enigma is a phantom that is enhanced artificially. Akijo finds out that she shows up in the facility where his mother is, and the group rushes to the area. They meet Arisu, and she tells them that Enigma's ultimate goal is to control phantoms and dominate humanity. Enigma appears in front of them. Akijo is going to confront her but Mai stops him and convinces him to stay behind but he can't stand to watch as they go down one by one, so he attempts to punch her, but he fails. Enigma shapeshifts to his mother's figure, and Akijo gets hit when he saves Roru, not far away from them. Arisu yells that there must be a way for Akijo to regain his abilities. She believes that Roru is born out of him because of his abilities. Enigma hears about it and wants to steal that ability as well. The team buys time for Roru and Haruhiko to find the source of his powers, and he successfully regains his abilities. While Akijo tries to invoke Phantom, Enigma quickly summons the phantoms he sealed, but he tells her that he fails to understand one thing. While the ability is the same as the one she took from him, as a human, he can grow. And so, he summons Marcosias and Cthulhu in their original form as a hellhound and a giant octopus. His phantoms lunge toward the opposition and manage to wound Enigma. She gets angry and attacks him, but the whole team synchronizes with one another. With Koido and Rienae's abilities, they restrict her movements. Ikijo seals him with the Book of Troth, and crystals form from Enigma's body. Mai crushes it into pieces through her abilities, and they defeat her. Ikijo goes to see his mother, they start crying as soon as their eyes meet. They converse and finally reconcile in person. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.